They were the unsung heroes of the sea. They were small, simple, and sturdy warships that fought bravely against the Nazi U-boats in the Battle of the Atlantic. They were named after flowers such as Gladiolus, Poppy, and Violet, but they were not weak or timid. They were tough, agile, and versatile, escorting the convoys that carried vital supplies and troops for the Allied war effort. The Flower-class corvettes were built in small commercial shipyards all over the United Kingdom and Canada, where larger warships could not be built. They used parts and techniques common to merchant shipping, which made them easy and cheap to construct. They also used commercial triple expansion machinery instead of steam turbines, which meant that the crews, mostly from Royal Naval Reserve and Royal Naval Volunteers, would be familiar with their operation. The Flower Class Corvettes were slow for a warship. With a maximum speed of 16 knots, they were also lightly armed, intended solely for the anti-submarine warfare role. The original Flowers had a raised forecastle, a well deck, a bridge, and a continuous deck running aft. They also had a mast located immediately forward of the bridge, a rare feature in most naval ships. They had a cruiser stern that completed their appearance, and they were fitted with a 4-inch gun on the bow, depth charge racks carrying 40 charges on the stern, a mine-sweeping winch, and a 2-pounder pom-pom gun on a bandstand over the engine room. These corvettes were designed for inshore patrol and harbour anti-submarine defence, but they soon proved their worth in the ocean convoys. Their long-range endurance and availability made them the backbone of the mid-ocean escort force, the group of ships that protected the convoys in the most dangerous parts of the Atlantic, where the air cover was scarce and the U-boats were numerous. The flower-class corvettes faced many challenges and hardships in their duty, such as bad weather, rough seas, enemy attacks, and mechanical problems. They were often outgunned and outnumbered by the U-boats, but they never gave up. They fought with courage and determination, sinking or damaging many submarines, and saving countless lives and ships. The flower-class ships were not uniform in their design or armament. Remnants of a desperate nation scrabbling to defend itself they could be supported by any small dockyard or naval station, so many ships had a variety of weapon systems. There was really no such thing as a standard flower class corvette. Each ship had its own personality and history. A typical action by a flower encountering a surfaced U-boat during convoy escort duties was to run directly at them, forcing them to dive and limiting their speed and maneuverability. The flower would drop depth charges or fire its guns, keeping the U-boat busy long enough to allow the convoy to pass safely. The success for the flowers should be measured in terms of tonnage protected, rather than U-boats sunk. Typical reports of convoy actions by these ships included numerous instances of U-boat detection near a convoy, followed by brief engagements and a rapid return to station. As another U-boat took advantage of the skirmish, the attacks would continue. Continuous actions against a numerically superior U-boat force demanded considerable seamanship skills from all concerned, and were very wearing on the crews. Construction of the Flower Class was superseded towards the end of the war, as larger shipyards concentrated on the River Class frigates and smaller yards on the improved Castle Class corvette. The Flower Class represented fully half of the Allied convoy escort vessels in the North Atlantic during World War II. They were the flowers of the sea, but they had thorns. They were the guardians of the convoys, the defenders of freedom, and the heroes of this war. I really can't, I really can't stress how important this class of ship was to the Allied war effort. Without the crews of these ships, there would be no modern world. That is my humble opinion, and the Canadians especially do not get enough credit for their service in defending those convoys. Their current mission today within NATO comes from their tenacity in fighting new boats. Just a, a little thought. There's not enough time to explain just how much I love this class of ship, but let's get in and play some. We are using a fun little 2.3 lineup from the humble UK coastal tech tree featuring the flower, the dark aggressor, and a little underappreciated uh, Kaz aircraft in the form of the Firecrest, which never saw action in real life and is underappreciated by the community at large, and I think it's a fantastic naval aircraft. Enjoy! 
Ahoy and welcome to the channel. Playing HMCS Brantford, flower class Corvette. Quite an interesting boat. The class has an amazingly robust history through the sheer amount of vessels built and the amount of action that they saw. Nearly all of the dominions of the United Kingdom used the flower class. And the Canadians especially took her as a as a real pride, responsible for building most of the ones that were supplied to the US. Now a lot of players don't particularly like the main gun, it's a 3 inch gun, 4 inch gun I should say. And it does well. It's just being such a low battle rating, when you encounter this ship, you will probably not have had much experience with large caliber shells. And so this is the sort of ship you come back to once you have destroyer skills and long range gunnery because there is no range finder and you're relying purely on sight. 2.3 is a great, a great battle rating. It's just before powerful destroyers show up. So if you see them in your battle, they are the reserve tier ones and they're usually Clemson's. So you do get the odd Japanese one. Now at this, at this battle rating there is two distinct metas, the fast, agile ships and the slow, cumbersome ships. And ultimately the weapon of choice at this battle rating is a fast firing, long range weapon such as a 40mm Bofors, or a pom pom, or a Soviet 37mm, oh sorry, a German 37mm. All those sorts of weapons are pretty effective at this battle rating. Now playing the large ship, I'm taking the role of the tank and the brawler. I want to try and divert the, the attention away from the fast craft to myself while trying to take other large craft down. This flower class is super maneuverable. Taking some shots here at that British Corvette. I think it's a British Corvette. Is that an ag Amaz <laughs> Is that a magazine ammo a magazine detonation? A bit tongue tied. Unable to sneak that last shot through the gap. And so I feel pretty confident using the main gun. It's got nice trajectory and at this at this combat level you're going to see pretty close range engagements, four to five kilometers, sometimes six. Don't underestimate it. The semi-armor piercing shell is the best to use against the large ships because you can get their crew compartments or their magazines. We've got a German mine layer coming in ahead off to our starboard bow. They have a lot of weaponry on board but they are a slow cumbersome ship. My goal here is to try and do as much crew damage as possible. Pro probably take out the bridge. If I stay bow onto him he shouldn't do too much damage. We're pretty resilient. I am at risk at losing the main gun though. Oh, he's turning towards us. He is a mine layer, so I do need to be mindful, but it doesn't it doesn't seem to have any mines on the on the stern of his ship. So we're going to come in nice and close here, and I'm going to an attempt an adept charge kill on this foolish mine sweeper, a mine layer. Quite an imposing vessel at this battle rating. Lots of firepower, but it is a little bit squishy. Oh, we're being flanked here. We've got an Italian S-boot, post-war version. We need to take him out quickly with the pom-pom. I've set my course across the bow of the mine layer. All right, we've taken out the MC-485, and we just need to take out this armored gunboat now. Oh, we've just collided. It's time to drop the depth charges. Drop, 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 drop. Half of them should do. We'll turn away from him in case he's got mines. And there we go. Nice triple kill. The flower class, living up to its name, taking names with the depth charges. We are down to 41% in the crew, so we're doing pretty well. And as I said, it's pretty, pretty survivable. It's not the most survivable of the large warships at this battle rating. 
but it is certainly the most maneuverable. I love the rudder action on this, on this ship. Oh, we've got a revenge bomb coming in. I'm going to try and turn towards the shore. And that way, hopefully, he won't be able to get a nice line of attack. But if, if he's committed to a suicide run, he won't care too much about the trees. We've designated him as the priority target, so the, I'll let the AA do it itself. And I'll worry about being the helmsman. I'm going to turn in towards the shore here, trying to obstruct his view. We took him out. Did he manage to take, drop his bomb? I don't... Yeah, he did. He dropped his bomb. <laughs> he dropped it good. Coming back in the fire crest, the squadron vehicle 2.3. Very fast attacker. Lightly armed. But it has the M3 Browning, which is a nice little thing to have at 2.3. It's not overly popular in the other game modes, but I like it in naval, and it suits this lineup. You can take it to most... Most battle ratings, because it's fast. And that's one of the, the key things that you're going for in a CAS aircraft, is super fast to get in the AA screen. We're flying in the livery of the number 817 squadron, the Sydney Carrier Group livery. But I believe, I believe the number 817 squadron was initially a Royal Navy Air Group. That was then resurrected by the Royal Australian Navy. Pull up too late and we just hit the mast. No good. The next boat out of port is being requested a dozen times and I just never got around to making a video about it. So here we go, the Dark Aggressor. Probably, and in my humble opinion, the best PT boat, or the best torpedo boat in the British lineup currently. For my playstyle. It's fast, it's got four torpedoes, so you can make a mistake if you need to, unlike two tube torpedo ships. And it's got depth charges as the extreme backup. So, and of course the somewhat stabilized 40 millimeter on the bow is a very potent weapon. I recommend running AP, round, AP rounds exclusively, just so you can shred crewmen and also take out armored turrets on destroyers if you decide to up-tier her. Very capable in an up-tier, or if somewhat lacking in the torpedo power department. I do wish we would get some other British torpedoes besides the ones that we... I think they're fitted to nearly every ship. I think it's the Mark VIII. Correct me if I'm wrong. I do get things wrong. We are on the hunt. I'm still hunting big ships. We'll support the little ships where we can. If anyone runs into us at close range, we'll fry them with the 40 mil. But ultimately, I want to try and get behind the harbor to find where all those large ships were hiding. Our team is on the front foot. We have the initiative. I'll try and get some long range shots out here, but he was taken down before I could even range him in. Very short lifespans in in light, uh, light vessels at this battle rating because it's just so populated. I find that my lifetimes are much, much longer at higher tier. But then you can use more of a sneaky tactic. So depending on how you want to play a small vessel, there are quite a few varieties and opportunities. Oh, we've got a Stuka coming in at a very high angle. It's coming at us too, but someone destroyed his ordnance. Okay, it looks like we have a target up ahead, and it just so happens to be a flower class. This is great, so I can show how to kill one as well. He's not using his main gun. I find that most players don't use the main gun, just out of lack of experience. So we're going to take out the gunners, take out the pom-pom. That is a deadly threat to us. We're going to come in super hot, shoot the, uh, the gunners here up on the bridge. Come in really hot, and if you've got enough momentum, you can throw depth charges. See if we can do it here. Yes! We threw it up onto the deck. You watch. <laughs> you can blow them up with a depth charge on the deck. Lol. You got that can of dash right in your face. What have we got here? A DB7. They're a pretty rare aircraft as well. Especially if you have the British one. The British French one. Well, there's a successful game. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button, and we'll see you next time.
The flower class corvettes were built in small commercial shit yards all over the United Kingdom. 